The Canadian political climate is continuing to grow increasingly toxic, and violent threats, attacks, and harassment are becoming the norm. And this isn't limited to any individual political party, group, or side. People are becoming increasingly toxic everywhere. But I also think it's important to highlight who many of those threats are directed against, because while they affect all politicians, they affect female politicians in particular. The language used against female politicians in Canada is appalling. They are objectified, harassed, belittled, and ignored at every turn. Canadian politics may have a number of female members these days, but it remains an old boys club, with a lot of small-minded men making a lot of awful statements. And there have been a lot of recent stories that highlight this problem. Like how Charlie Angus shared a subpoena to testify in a case about harassment that he's experienced. Last year, Charlie Angus brought forward a bill about advertising for fossil fuels, and as a result, he received death threats. And not only that, people shared the names of the workplaces of his children and encouraged online harassment against them. This is ridiculous. This is a politician bringing forward a private member's bill. It's a part of normal political practice. And there were threats brought forward against his children's lives. I don't care whether you agree with them or not, nobody deserves that. And then there's the threats against Justin Trudeau, which are limitless. One man was arrested on February 7th for threats, but all you need to do is wander through any online comment section and you'll see that the vocal threats against Justin Trudeau's life are becoming increasingly normalized. And implied death threats like window stickers that use euphemisms from TV shows are entirely too common. And there is very limited legal recourse for this kind of thing. And as a result, lots of politicians are just walking away including Charlie Angus, and this Liberal MP who shared her story of why she's leaving politics, as a direct result of the massive amount of threats and misogyny that she's experienced. There's literally lists of politicians for harassment that are distributed on websites like Gap, where they organize in order to harass, threaten, and intimidate politicians who they find disagreeable. People have stopped arguing about ideas and instead are just trying to force people out of the conversation who they disagree with. And I'm not immune to this either, even somebody like me who just talks about politics online. Death threats are just part of the territory. You get threatened all the time. Comment sections, DMs, and more. People try to get me fired at my job regularly, although it has yet to work. People share things like my last name, my salary, and try to track me down, and that's just normalized. And when you share that this happens, the reaction that you get from other people isn't shock or horror. They just sort of go, yeah, you kind of figured that would happen. And things like doxing are becoming incredibly common. Politicians are getting harassed at personal residences all the time. Like, you can hate a politician all you like, but if they have kids or a family or neighbors, they definitely don't deserve to be harassed for the actions of that one individual. And as extremist rhetoric continues to spread in Canada and violent, threatening language and politics continues to be normalized, it feels like only a matter of time before things go way too far. And Canada isn't immune from this kind of thing. Just look back to Pierre Laporte in 1970. He was killed by extremist groups in Quebec. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen anytime soon, but if we don't take meaningful action to stem the tide of violent speech and politics these days, then the risk grows every day. Criticizing political opponents is one thing, but a constant barrage of personal attacks, threats, and lies is only going to make things more dangerous. And if we want good people to sign up to be in politics, then we need to make it safe. Not just for them, but their families. Because otherwise, all we're going to be left with is whoever's willing to do it. I don't know about you, but I'd like to cast a wider net.